Welcome back. This is part two of our shear and moment diagram example. In the last part, we just figured out what the reactions were and we talked a little bit about the internal positive sign conventions for shear and moment. And we're actually going to use this in this example to go and draw what our shear di diagram is going to look like. So whenever I'm unsure about what a shear or moment diagram is going to look like, what I like doing is going to each significant point along this beam or whatever structure I'm looking at and actually looking at what's going on internally in the beam. So actually trying to figure out what the internal shear and internal moments are at several portions of this beam. So for an example, if I wanted to figure out where our shear diagram starts at point A or what value the shear is at point A, what I can do is go and look at a very small portion of that beam elements, so this tiny little portion here, and I can actually go ahead and draw that out here. So there is point A, point A is here on the left side, and we also have this three kips of load going down at point A, and this distance is incredibly small. So we're basically figuring out what the shear is right to the right of this point A. So I can draw the internal shear like this. And remember, I took this cut here at this portion at A, and the shear on the right side of any cut that we take or that element that we're looking at needs to be going down in order to assume a positive shear. So I'm just gonna call this VA or the shear at cut A. And because this entire structure, this entire beam is in static equilibrium, every portion, every little piece of this beam also has to be in stat uh, static equilibrium. So every portion of this beam has to satisfy the static equation. Sum of forces in the x, y, and the moments about a point need to equal zero. So if I'm looking at this little cut, what I can do is take the sum of forces in the y direction and say up is positive, and that equals zero. So I have this minus three kips here at point A, and then I have this shear that's going down so i'm going to draw it as negative or write it as negative and although i'm writing it as negative positive means shear is going down but because i've drawn it going down when i'm coming up with this equation this equilibrium equation i have to put this minus sign here and that's because here i said going up is positive so this needs to equal zero and if i do the math va is equal to negative three kips. So I know the shear at point A is negative three kips. So negative three, this is going to be our shear diagram and the units are going to be in kips. So now we need to figure out what our shear diagram is going to look like between points A and B. Well, if I look at this span A and B, there's no other loading besides this three kips at this span. So this distance here from A to B, this two foot distance, there's no other loads. So if I took a cut anywhere between the span, let's say here, and I redrew that beam or that portion of the beam here. So there's point A, there's the negative three kips going down and this cut while well, the shear would be going down. And if I did the same exact thing that I did up here, where I took the sum of forces in the Y direction equal to zero, I'm still gonna get VA is equal to negative three kips. So that means because there's no load here and it was a point load here, the shear is actually going to be constant all the way up to B. So it's going to be a flat line all the way up to point B. This is going to be negative three kips. Well, what happens when I go just to the right side of B? I know what's happening on the left side of B. So here's point B. I know what's going on here. It's negative three kips. But what about just to the right side of B? Well, if I take a cut just to the right of B, and draw out that segment. So here is point A, there is our three kips there, and then here is point B, and we have this vertical reaction of nine kips. Well, I took a cut of a structural element, and that means the shear on the right-hand side should be going down, and I'll just call that VB, right? Our positive internal shear needs to be drawn going down if the cut, if we're looking on the right side of the cut. So again, I can take the sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero with up going or up being positive. And I have this minus three kips here, this positive nine kips there, and then this minus VB here, and that equals zero. Well, if I do the math, 
vb is equal to 6 kips, right? Negative 3 plus 9 is 6, and if I add vb to both sides, I get vb is equal to 6 kips. So that's telling me the shear is actually going to jump all the way up here to 6 kips. So this is a positive 6. I'm going to draw the shear going straight up. So great, we know what the shear over here at point B is. It goes up to 6 kips. Now what about between B and C? Well again, there's no other loading or reactions between B and this next point C. So I know the shear is going to be constant all the way up to C. So this is still going to be 6 kips just to the left side of C. But what about just to the right side of C? Well again, I can take a cut right here to the right of C and draw this span A, B, C out. So here is A, B, C. So here's point A. We have our three kips there. And then point B, we have nine kips there. And then finally, here's point C. So we took the cut just to the right side of C. There is our 10 kips. And our shear would be going down, right? B of C. So if I took sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero with up being positive, then I have this minus three kips there, this positive nine kips there, this negative 10 kips here, and then finally minus VC, and that's equal to zero. So again, if I did the math, VC would be equal to negative four. And that's telling me right to the right of C, it's actually the shear diagram is actually gonna jump all the way back down to negative four kips. I'm gonna draw the shear going straight down to negative four kips. Now between C and D, again, there is no loading here. So the shear is going to be constant, right? There's nothing going on. There's no other forces or reactions affecting the shear diagram between point C and D. Until, of course, we get to point D. And we have this four kips acting at the end of D. Well, we know this four kips is going to push the shear diagram back up to zero. And that's because we have a negative four kips down here. Well, why is that zero? Well, if we look at point D, which is over here, we basically took a cut here between C and D, and we know that the shear is going to be constant between the span. But what if we took a cut just to the right side of D? Well, realistically, there is no beam there. But what if we drew out that diagram? So we have this entire beam. Here's point A, here's point B, here's point C, here's point D, and then let's just take an imaginary cut to the right side of D and say we have this internal shear, which I'll just call VD. Well, if we have this three kips acting here and this nine kips acting there and then this 10 kips acting down there and then we have this four kips acting here, right? And the reason we're including this four kips is because it's part of joint D and we took the cut just to the right side of D. Well, if we took the sum of forces of this entire section and set it equal to zero, we would find that we have this negative three plus nine, right? Nine kips minus 10 and then plus four. And then we have this minus VD, right? This imaginary internal shear just to the right side of D and we set this equal to zero. Well, negative three plus nine minus 10 plus four is zero. So that means VD is equal to zero. And that's why the shear actually closes right here at zero. So great, we have our shear diagram drawn. Here is our X axis. We know anything below is negative. So we have this negative shear here, we have this positive shear here, and then again we have a negative shear here. Now we're going to use this information, this shear diagram, and our forces up here to come up with the moment diagram in the next part. So see you then.